Greetings and welcome! A little while ago in May I started to build a fully tracked bicycle tank. Actually the new bicycle vehicle is something like an anniversary because it's my 20th bicycle so far. Also it isn't a failure project. I hope I didn't spoil it too much. Here in that recording I'm in the middle of a lathe job trying to get that inside part of that sprocket. Just need that inside part to build myself a new bicycle chain sprocket for my new project. Sadly my lathe is too weak to come from the outside, so I do a pincer attack. The remaining metal in the inside will just be obliterated with bare force. BAM! Hmm. Where is it? Can't see it. Oh, it's in between my foots. There you are. Well, that outside ring is just garbage. Well, the inside part is my jewel to go on. Now that has to fit. Well, almost there. Just a little bit more. Wow, see that? It just fits on there. Amazing. The seat is another story. Rocked for at least one week on that stupid thing. Constructed out of aluminum and equipped it with springs from an old Trabant car seat. Wanted to build the tank as low as possible. That's why the seat is that flat bottomed. My original idea was to use mirrors to look forward, while almost lying in there. Anyway, if I want to build a fully tracked vehicle, I need tracks. They have to walk and they need to stay on track. If you want to know from what real tank those tracks are coming from, I don't know either. I would guess they are Russian. Ha! Last man standing. It's a tough one. So yeah, by the way, if you are interested in a DIY quick release for ropes or heavy things, Hanging from the siling, for example, just take a car trunk lock. They are just perfect for that purpose. That new track I'm going to build in that video isn't my first try at all. It's my Ford track system. My first track ever was one out of a leather band and a water hose, which was supposed to run on bicycle rims for my bicycle tank number 5 from 2011. The screws were just too long and bumped into the rim. Maybe it would have rocked if I would have sunk all the screws. Who knows. My second attempt was back in 2015 when I was trying to build a giant bandwagon out of an old Isuzu jeep. But I never finished that design, I just abandoned it. My third attempt was partially successful. This time it was an error in design and as well in my own craftsmanship. I wasn't very precise in what I was doing, so I failed. But not this time, it's my fourth time building a tank track. And finally it is rocking. But it is a sheep design. There isn't a real drive sprocket with thieves which are engaging in the track. All my wheels are just 
idler wheels, you could say. Well, there is a drive sprocket, but it's engaged just the friction. So, suitable tension of my tracks is key. For testing my new design, I only finished one side. Well, what I'm supposed to say, it looked quite nice. So, with last doubts vanishing in the dirt below my tracks, consequently, I started with the other side. Ah, ground substance, I'm using that old 20 cm wide conveyor belt. Don't know where it comes from. For my tracks, I just need one half, so 10 cm. Luckily, the whole belt is already separated. The only connection are those rubber shovels, which I have to cut. That conveyor belt isn't just rubber. Inside, there are groups of steel wire. So cutting with the angle grinder is the only option. Don't need those either. Well, looking good, almost finished. It's still not lunchtime. Let's ask HQ what's with lunchtime. Hallo? Lebst du essen? So the track consists out of three main parts. But where are they coming from, you ask? Well, probably not. But I will show you regardless. Let's start with that piece. First we need an aluminum angle bar. Trim off the piece in length I need. Almost always using that squibbing caliper, which is a great help for marking that stupid center punch always gets magnetic. Well you learn from failure and pain. Giving each piece a smooth tire contact area with some kind of a forging die. We don't like sharp edges. It's just way too tiring to do it with the tiny tin scissors. Yeah, with the hand lever scissors it's much easier to do. Now the rubber pads. That rubber band got the perfect white so that I can simply cut it in half. After that, my hand lever scissors are doing the rest. By the way, such a hand lever machine is perfect for cutting any kind of rubber stuff efficiently. My rubber pads are finished. Well, some of them got that cutting edge, which I don't need. Where comes that cutting edge from, you ask? Well, that rubber band originally looks like that. I think it used to be a seal for those bunker doors from those old aircraft hangars. Well, I'm not sure, but I found the rubber nearby. Next, that main link part, which consists out of that rectangular metal tube. But for my single links, I need a U-form. So cutting it in half is the next step. With a bandsaw, that's no problem, but it still takes some time to do. My pattern piece for marking the boreholes I have to drill. And pain again remains my teacher for the project. Now that you know where those separate pieces are coming from, I'll show you how I made one single track link. Cool thing is that it's visible where those steel wires are running, so I can easily drill every single time at the right spot while avoiding on the same time to hurt any of those wires while drilling between them. 
for the whole tracks I'm only using M4 screws but with those self securing nuts which got that plastic insert. First time not tightening the nuts completely so that I'm still able to arrange the single pieces perfectly in line. After that I can secure the nuts completely. Next drilling that pair of second holes which are securing the rubber pad in place. Despite the fact that I am drilling 4.2 mm holes in the rubber parts, they are still too narrow. So with a little bit of force applied by pliers, I can force that screw in there. Just like that, one link is finished. There are only 49 left to do. And that's the number for only one track, one side. So in total both tracks together are consists out of 100 links. And I'm finished with the second track, but can't use it right away. First I have to adjust the alignment of the real guide profiles. Because they are way too much upright for those road wheels to drive in. After those approximately 400 boreholes added, my workbench is kind of abused. It's just a scrap thing to use. Tabletop too small, wise not very rigid mounted and as you can see a broken surface. Well now it's time to put a track around its wheels. I didn't wasted any space or material into a bolt-in track tensioning device. Have to do that manually with a crowbar. Like always, joy was just for a short time, because after a few meters I did notice that the tracks already got loose, because three wheels got real hubs with nuts, and three wheels got real hubs with quick spanners. Those spanner hubs are just scrap, impossible to make them tight. Luckily I was able to change the real axle bolt itself. After that I was able to give the tracks the needed tension without any more losing because those nuts are more reliable. That steering is an issue though. For that you need at least a little bit of momentum forward while using those sticks to lift up one side in order to drift a little bit around. Also it's a serious problem that I can't drive backwards yet. Doing it manually with my hands just sucks. With one of those two steering sticks you lift up the whole vehicle so that the still running tank track isn't anymore engaged to the ground. One of those old bicycle rubber block brakes is stopping that little wheel at the stick end. It isn't perfect. To steer you need to put in a lot of strength. 
Okay, that scale is too weak. But that one should do it. But I have to consider that it's already displaced 10 kilos. So I have to subtract 10 kilos from the final result. I would say you need roughly 25 kilos into your arms for steering. Almost undrivable, but still possible to master. That old tank is actually a further development from my bicycle tank number 3 from 2009. But now it is fully tracked and you can even steer while driving. Because at the end of the steering sticks there is a little roller wheel. On the original one you could only steer if you had stopped the whole thing completely. So that's some clear improvement there. In the next episode I will motorize that thing because there's still that unused sprocket right here. See ya.